day football fans were expecting for a while now is finally here. The European Super League has been announced by 12 clubs. Yesterday, social media exploded with the announcement and a lot of people shared their reactions on the Super League. And in this video, I just quickly want to take a step back, see where this idea comes from, um, what the Super League would actually look like. And after I'll give some arguments as to why I also don't think this is a good idea. So let's get right into it. So let's first start with the beginning of European football. It was first created to have the best teams of each country compete against each other in an international league. And the Europa Cup 1 was the current Champions League, which included all the champions of the national divisions. So you had the champion of the Netherlands, the champion of Germany, the champion of Spain, etc, etc, you know the gist. And these teams would compete in a straight knockout phase against each other. This changed in the 90s after the Champions League reform when they introduced the group stages and the Europa Cup 1 turned into the Champions League. Same thing uh, with the Europa Cup 2, which later turned into the UEFA Cup, which later turned into the current Europa League. And these formats have all been around for a long time, but over the years have obviously changed to what they are now. Then there was a third competition, which was the Cup Winners' Cup. <clears throat> so all the winners of the domestic cups went into a European competition as well, like the Europa Cup 1. And eventually there was uh, a cup winners, cup for the cup winners, it pretty much complicated, but I know. Um, they eventually dropped this cup, it no longer exists, but uh, this year, 2021, they're introducing another cup, the UEFA Conference League, will, which will be a step below the Europa League, so the level of the Europa League will improve, and there will be a European competition with many other teams from many other countries. And uh, what we can see nowadays is that the Champions League and the Europa League are relatively stale with winners from the same five countries most of the time, including Spain, England, France, rarely, but it's included in the top five, Germany and Italy. So these big five are kind of dominating football at the moment. And here's where the Super League comes in as well. So quickly to get the idea straight, what would the Super League look like and who are the initiators of the Super League? So there's six teams from England, Manchester City, Manchester United, Liverpool, Tottenham Hotspurs, Chelsea and Arsenal. And then we have three teams from Spain, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid and three teams from uh, Italy. AC Milan, Inter Milan and Juventus. So quickly, the format of the Super League. I've got it all written down, so no freestyle, but straight up facts. The 20 clubs would be split into two 10-team groups. Each team in a group would play home and away matches against one another. The top four teams in each group would then play a knockout playoff across the two divisions to decide the champion for the season. There would be home and away legs in the quarterfinals and semifinals, with a final played at a neutral venue. It would also see the best versus worst approach to the knockout matches, with the team with the best record playing the team with the 8th best record. This would also apply to the semifinals. Matches would take place in midweek, with the exception of the final. Clubs would still play in their domestic leagues, which is an important one to remember. Out of these four teams who initiated the European Super League, four have not won the Europa Cup 1 or Champions League. These are Man City, Tottenham Hotspur, Arsenal and Atletico Madrid. All have played regularly in this competition and have even made finals, but never actually lifted the trophy in the end. So what about the new Champions League format that UEFA were planning for 2024? 
Um, in this case, everything would just go on as planned. But a big caveat that we have to talk about is the fact that all the national FAs and UEFA and FIFA have spoken out against the European Super League and the teams who initiated it. Um, of course, both are all in for the money. So both are separate, like solely produced for money. The new Champions League format got a lot of criticism because it produced more games. More games means more money. The same thing with the Super League. It's more games and more money. But a good thing that they have done, however, is to speak out against the creation of a certain Super League. And if these teams were to go through with it, they would literally be banned from playing in their domestic league. And the players playing for these clubs would be banned from playing for their national teams, which is a massive repercussion. So it's all fine. Now we know what the Super League will look like. And we know the initiators of the Super League. But why do these teams want a Super League? Why is the Champions League not good enough? Why is their domestic league not good enough? Well, the simple answer is they want more money and they want more competitive matches being played throughout the season. Um, seeing that, for example, AC Milan are in this Super League, they haven't won a title for at least 10 years. So the competitiveness is not an argument in this case. Liverpool, for example, hadn't won a title in over 25 years before they just won it. So in their domestic league, they're competitive enough to be able to keep playing in this league. Of course, their desire is to remain in their domestic leagues. But as was said by the FAs and the international football associations, they would be banned from playing in their domestic league. We don't know if this is just threats or if they will actually pursue and ban the teams from playing there. But for now, it's a massive statement. Um, the money. These games would improve the income for the teams to a massive extent because this is always going to be a great game that's being played. Um, so there's always big teams playing against one another. So the TV revenue would go through the roof. And as we said before, there were 12 teams that initiated this. But there's going to be 20 teams in the Super League. So there's going to be more teams added to the Super League. Uh, so as far as we know, the German teams and the French teams have not gone ahead with the Super League. Also, we've seen teams in Portugal, the Netherlands, Russia speak out against a Super League. So the next few nations are also of the cards um, and even the broader football community has been like protesting immensely these past few days we've seen high profile people in the football community tweet out and um, post out against the super league and one gary neville hit the nail on its head and i'll insert a little clip here you know, the motivation is it's greed. Dave, my reaction earlier on wasn't an emotional reaction. Deduct them all points tomorrow, put them at the bottom of the league and take the money off them. Seriously, you have got to stamp on this. This is a, it's criminal. It's a criminal act against football fans in this country. Make no mistake about it. This is the biggest sport in the world. This is the biggest sport in this country. And it's a criminal act against the fans. Simple as that. Deduct points, deduct their money and punish them. So from the fans' perspective, it would not make sense in my opinion. Clubs in England have over 100 years, nearly 150 years in some cases, of football history in their country. Liverpool FC has always been Liverpool FC because the roots of the club are in Liverpool, are in Merseyside. It's a club of the people, of the people that live there. In the last years, clubs and brands have gone global. They have amassed followers all around the globe. People have been watching all around the globe. The people have um, clubs have fans all around the globe, and for people like that live in Australia, for people that live in the states, for example, they could see this as a welcome new deal. Um, but these combining leagues just have a sinister look to them. 
uh, this is a sport that was created by and for the people and it's being taken over by corporations by owners um, by brands that just want to profit and players clubs leagues associations should all stand together to speak out against these reformations of leagues uh, i've made a video about the beneliga before which is a similar concept but not the same this is far more intense and far heavier and yeah i could not see this leading up to any good for the future so it will probably come to no surprise that I'm personally very against the European Super League. I think it's a scary concept and I think we have to keep the game to ourselves, to the fans. We are important to this this sport. Uh, imagine following your club all around the country for years and then suddenly you're only playing away matches across Europe. Fair enough, the intensity, the, the game would be amazing. The quality of the football would be amazing. But for my personal opinion, it's not about the quality of the football. I, I mean, I could honestly not care less about how good the football is. It's about community. It's about supporting your club. It's about supporting um, your region. It's about being with the people that you know, uh, people that you love, uh, supporting the club that you love, representing the colors that you love, representing your city with the European Super League there has been no thought for the fans they have been completely disregarded and even the fans of these clubs are unanimously against a european super league so let's hope it just stays with the idea and it will never materialize and if they see the owners of the clubs if they see the backlash that this idea has created already i hope they pull out of the super league and not continue with this ludicrous plan. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little ranty, um, a little bit different, not scripted. I just wanted to get my point across, my legit feelings across how I feel about the Super League. But please, if you did enjoy this video, consider leaving a like, um, consider subscribing to my channel. I would appreciate it a lot. And I would love to see you in the next video where I hope to have a lighter tone of voice. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.